where it's beautiful backdrop. And you're like, well, I'm looking right into the sun. Well, I don't know where you would like to look, but I want to look right into the sun also. Amen? Oh, man. We just got a great evening planned. And guess what? There's not really much on the agenda except one thing, and that's going after Jesus. Whatever that looks like. So we're looking for people to just worship. We're looking for people to just pray. We, we have a, a city that I live in. Anybody live in Pekin here? Amen. We need healing. Our city needs healing. Anybody live in Peoria that came out? Your city needs healing also. There's every, everywhere we we're at, we need God's hand to be a part of this. So this is what this is about. Is We're just going to be praying for our city. We're going to be praying for one another and seeking God. So please do not just sit there and let us sing to you. I pray that you would be engaged and have an encounter with Jesus tonight. That's really what my heart is. So we're going to get started. Pastor... Pam Cochran from Grace Methodist is going to open us up in prayer. Let's give her a hand. Can we do that? What an honor and joy it is to be with you this evening. How do you like God's sanctuary? Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to invite you to bow your heart, head and heart with me as we Go before the throne of grace. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, God Almighty, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the living God, the one true God, the only one who saves our souls, we come before you, Lord, in the blood of Jesus. We come, Lord, seeking your face. We come, Lord, bringing all of our brokenness to you this evening knowing that when Jesus passes by and says live, we have life in abundance. Oh Lord, help us to, to rest in the assurance that you are good all the time. Help us to remember that every experience throughout every day is designed for our good, that you are desiring to draw us ever closer to you, that we may have a better understanding of who you are, and because of who you are, all of the goodness that you do. Help us, Lord, to trust you more. Help us to fall into your arms of grace and hear you say, all is well, my child. Lord, we, we thank you that we are born for such a time as this, that we, may, that we may be your expression of love in this place. We pray, Lord, that as our hearts look up to you, as our voices sing your praise this evening, that you would be pleased. Lord, that as your children of faith come together from many denominations, all in your spirit be pleased and we pray lord that our community would tell a new story a glory story an everlasting story that that we would continue to press on in your hope in your glory to honor you lord for you are worthy we pray these things in your magnificent name jesus Amen. And God's people say, Amen. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. to be done in this city. 
Would you just welcome the Lord here? Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we trust you. Hallelujah.
the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here overflow in this place fill our hearts with your love
very powerful. Amen? And uh, all week long I've been just reading through the prayers in Scripture, asking God for the right one to, to pray, to read tonight. So I just want to read from Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah prayed a prayer after recognizing the condition, the serious condition of, of Jerusalem as well as his people. So I think this is fitting tonight. So I'm reading from the message, and I have changed a few words uh, to meet our need here tonight. Let's pray. God of heaven, the great and awesome God, loyal to his covenant and faithful to those who love him and obey his commandments. Lord, see us here tonight. Listen to our cry. Pay attention to our prayers, our worship, as it comes from the hearts of servants. As we begin this prayer vigil night and day, this intercession for our city, God, and for our nation. We confess our sins, the sins of our country. We include ourselves, our ancestors, amongst those who have sinned against you. For we know that the beginning of revival is indeed repentance. We've treated you like dirt at times. We haven't done what you've told us, haven't followed your commands, haven't respected your decisions. All the same, remember the warning you posted to your servant Moses. God, you said if, if we betrayed you that you would scatter to the four winds. But if we come back to you and do what you tell us to do, you said that rather we would not be scattered, but that you would place your name close as a mark upon the nation. And so we claim tonight, Lord, in Pekin as that place where your name will be marked. Here we are, your servants, your people, whom you so powerfully and impressively redeemed. Father, listen to us tonight. Listen to our prayers. Hear our worship. All of your servants who delight in honoring you and make us successful today so that your kingdom might prosper. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. May God add blessing to the reading of his word tonight.
think that you're unreachable. You might think that you're unlovable. You might think that you're you're unapproachable. That that God doesn't even notice you. But I'm here to tell you that God spoke you into existence, and He loves you. He loves you.
Isn't this awesome? You know, it doesn't matter what name is on the front of the building, what background we're from, what denomination we're part of. Tonight we're gathered together, one common denominator in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, as Pastor Darren was sharing about Nehemiah, I couldn't help but think about the story of Jonah and how God sent Jonah to Nineveh to deliver a message of doom and gloom. For 40 consecutive days, Jonah reminded the people that God was going to destroy them because of their wickedness. But on day 41, ever say but? It says that the king and the people responded with repentance. And instead, God extended grace and mercy to that city. In fact, one translation literally says that God changed his mind. Amen. Amen? Amen? That means no matter where you're at tonight, no matter what you've done, no matter who you've done it with, God loves you. Yeah. And he's madly in with he's madly in love with you. Amen? Amen? He's not mad at you. So let's go to him. Let's repent. Let's pray. And let's expect him to move in our hearts and beyond. Amen? Amen. Father, we come before you tonight. We thank you so much for this group of people that have gathered together in your name to lift you up, to praise you, to make your name famous. God, we're reminded of your word in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then why hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land? So once again, Jesus, we ask you to forgive us. God, start with me. Forgive me. Forgive Chuck Tate. Wash me. Purify my heart. May our prayer tonight be one of David. Create in me a pure and clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Let the bones you've, re you've crushed, let them rejoice again. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of my salvation. Is God the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we thank you tonight. This group that is standing here is strong. And the word says the people who know their God will not only be strong, but will do great exploits. So we ask you to do great things in this city and beyond. Start with us. Start with this group. God, may we love others. May we love our other brothers and sisters in Christ the way you love them. Jesus, you said in John that the world would know we are your true disciples by how we love each other. May we get along. Unify us tonight. Strengthen us so we can be effective when we leave this place. May we love the entire world like you do. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in us and through us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.
Yes. 
Yeah. 
for what only you can bring. Lord, we need you to hijack our hearts. For too long, Lord, your people, we've been captivated and captured by all the wrong things. And somehow, some way, we've We've allowed the things of this world to draw us off course and draw our attention away from you. And God, we need you to move in and hijack our hearts. Lord, you have called your people to a purpose. A purpose of being good news ambassadors. People for whom the good news message of the resurrection of Jesus and the new life found in him is to be proclaimed. But Lord, how can we do that if we remain bound up? God, your people, they need to be set free from captivity. Lord, we need you to consume every thought that comes to our minds and take them captive in Christ Jesus. We need you to dismantle the strongholds of addiction and compulsion and shame and anger and hatred and prejudice. We need you to dismantle those chains and those strongholds. We need to be set free, God. Because you're calling us to a race a race marked out for us, but we've got too much weight on our backs to run that well. Oh God, so set us free right now. This community that we find ourselves, it's in need of good news ambassadors. People willing to proclaim the love and mercy and grace and forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, set us free that we can be those good news ambassadors. To go to each person that we come across daily. To look them in the eyes and say, you matter. You matter to the heart of God because he knit you together in your mother's womb for a purpose. And he loves you more than anything you can imagine. God, give us a burning passion and a single focus chase after you with everything that is within us, that nothing would get in the way, that nothing would draw us off course, that we would go neither to the right nor the left, but we would stay on track moment by moment and day by day, desperate and hungry for your spirit right now. Oh God, pour out your favor right now. Your people need you. They long for you and desperate for you. Oh God, I'm reminded of that passage that says the army was there the whole time. They just happened to look like bones. That is until you spoke, God. And then the army that didn't realize they were an army because they thought they were just bones began to rumble a little bit. And God, what this, what this city needs is for your church to do a little rumbling. For you to begin to remind us that though we are an army, even when we don't realize we're an army, that when you begin to speak into our lives, we begin to rumble a little bit. And we begin to arise and stand up into the places that you call us. Oh God, would you breathe your spirit upon us so that we can stand as a mighty and bold army of grace and love in this world. Oh God, would you begin to move and remind us, Lord God, of, of your purpose for your people. Oh God, that we could live in a community where Jesus gets to have his way. Where the kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Where we're no longer divided by our own agendas and wills. But we are united in the purpose, the person and the purpose and the passion our Lord Jesus Christ. Consume us, oh God. And hijack our hearts. Don't wait for us to turn to you, Lord God. You come down and hijack us and give us a vision of this boundless, matchless, limitless love that knows no end. Oh God.
Our lives be the place we fix our. 
share a little word with you real quick is that all right if you're standing you might want to sit down I just want to I just want to share something you know I want to thank you all for coming out again we got water over here if you're thirsty um, but I just want to I want to address two things that's going on you know God gave me a, a vision to make this happen down here in, in Pekin um, I live here I want to see God move in this town I want to see God move in this city but over the years of of living for him and walking with him I've seen a change in the tide I've seen a change in the way that that people look at others I've seen a way that people respond to others I've seen a way a difference in a change of what God would have in store for us to speak life into others and I see it because it happened in me. We've got so much turmoil. We, we, we watch the news and we've got so much stuff happening. When we've, we've got this thing that just happened a, 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 while, a, a while back ago, short time ago, I'm sorry, in Orlando where, where there was a bar that was shot up and it, and it was full of homosexual people and there's people that are saying they're thankful that it happened. And God's saying, I'm not thankful that it happened. God's saying, I wish somebody would have went to them and told them that I loved them. God's saying, I, I wish somebody would have, would have reached out to them. I wish somebody wouldn't have been scared by their tattoos or by their long hair or by their colored hair or, or by their cross-dressing ways. I just wish somebody would have told them that I loved them. We've got a battle going on, and the battle is not against flesh and blood, is what Scripture says, but against principalities and, and things along those lines. And, but you know what? We make it a battle against each other. We make it a battle against each other because we don't want to reach out and speak truth. And the truth is that you're not sinning, or you are sinning. The truth is, is that Jesus loves you. That's the truth. That's the bottom line. It's not what church that you go to or what you believe in. If you're Muslim, if you're not, if you're Democratic or you're Republican or Independent, if you're male, female, or you think you're male, female, the thing is, is Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you just as you are. And I want to read a story out of Luke chapter 10. And I'm speaking to, I'm going to speak to two different things here. I'm speaking to the church. I'm speaking to the Christian. Luke chapter 10 verse 25 says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. 
You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Somebody say the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Somebody say on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him in to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. See, in order to follow Jesus, church, in order, if you want your churches filled, you want to see people getting saved, you want to see lives change, we want to see peak and change, we want to see the homeless not be homeless, we want to see the Salvation Army not needed because the church has rose up and done something, you're going to have to get on the other side of the road. You're going to have to get bloody. And it's going to cost you a little money. It's going to cost you a little investment. It's going to cost you a little time. Because that, that, that is our neighbor. And for those of you who say, man, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm here just because I was invited. I thank you for being here. And on behalf of me, of the baby, how I've judged you, I repent and say I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I chose the other side of the road. I'm sorry that when I saw you wounded, I didn't help you. I might have kicked more dirt into that wound because of my selfish pride. And I'm sorry for not investing in your life. But if you are here and, and you're saying, you know, I'm just, I'm here because I was invited. I used to go to church or you know what? I, I, I've been burned by the church or I, I grew up in church but I never really followed God. I want to read something to you. Luke chapter 15 says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and went off in a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything there was a severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomachs with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long ways away off, 
His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and his sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. If you are not living for Jesus... I need to tell you that he loves you just as you are. You see, the big thing about this prodigal son is that people want to say that, that there was a repentant heart of the man and he came back to his father. But I read the scripture as the father seeing the son afar off and he didn't know if he was full of drugs. He didn't know if he was drunk. He didn't know if he was high. He didn't know if he was transgender. He didn't know how, what he had been messing in. He saw him and he went running to him without knowing any of that just because he was pleased that he saw his son but filled with love and compassion. Oh, church. Oh, church, we need that love. We need that love. If you're missing people out of your, if you're missing people out of your church and you haven't seen them in a while, be hunting them down saying, I miss you. I love you. If somebody comes in and you ain't never seen them before, and don't give them the old stink eye. Go up and say, hey, I love you. I'm glad you're here. Jesus loves you. Because that's truth. That's truth. And we need truth in our life. I believe that we live in a city of unloved people. I believe we live in a city of hurting people. I'll admit that I haven't done my part. Did anyone else admit that they haven't done their part? There's more. There's more. He saw me. He sought me. He told me out. He cleaned me up. And I, I went during this whole thing, I just heard God say, Lord, Lord. Can we make them clean? And God said, yes, we can because of what you did upon the cross. Yeah. They can be made clean and made whole. So as we go into this next song, we've been praying to a God who loves you. We've been praying to a God who's who, who wants you so bad. He's longing. He's been trying to get your attention. He sent you here. He's put people in your place. Would you respond to him tonight? Would you say, oh, I didn't know he would take me just as I am. I thought I had to clean myself up. I thought I had to put my, my good shoes on. I thought I had to put my, 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 my good pants on. I thought I had to part my hair a certain way. No, no, Jesus is saying, I'll take you just as you are. And maybe you have been a part of the congregation or the crowd that has been had your nose up saying, oh, I can't minister to that. I can't love on that. We want to see people healed. We want to see people saved. We want to see Jesus at his best. We got to show them what he did best for us. Because it says in Romans that even as sinners, Christ died. For us. We weren't deserving of it. 
Even as sinners, Christ died for us. We were worthy of it. And he still went to the cross and gave it all. I've asked some friends to come and pray. Help me pray, pastors, if that's you. Ask for you to come. And if that's you tonight, if you just feel like, you know what? I need a change in my life. I need a change in the way that I see people. I need a change in the way that I do things and respond to things. Would you come forward? If you're in need of a miracle tonight, if, if you're hurting your back or your, your knees or your neck or something along those lines, maybe you, maybe you can't hear in something and you're in need of a miracle, would you come forward? Maybe you need to respond to the call and say, Jesus, I accept your love and mercy in my life. Maybe for the first time or the 21st time.
If you're not praying for somebody and you are in prayer, five for five. Find them. Ask them. Five minutes. Find five people and ask them, can I pray for you? Five people. Five minutes. You can. 